Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are starting a brand new series on Oscar Wilde's famous essay, The Decay of Lying. Now, in 1891, Oscar Wilde published a dialogue entitled The Decay of Lying, an Observation. In it, he argues against realism or naturalism in art, instead arguing that art should be about effective lying, not attempting to tell the truth or portray society accurately. In this video, we will give a brief summary of Wilde's arguments and some of the main points of the essay. The rest of this series will look at the positions Wilde was engaging with, his arguments in greater depth, and some application of these arguments to contemporary discussions of aesthetics, literature, truth, and the stories that we tell ourselves. Now, at its heart, the dialogue is asking the question, what should art do? Should art serve as a mirror to life, representing it as faithfully and accurately as possible? Or should art represent life as more or greater than it is? Should art be the starting point and life follow after, or the other way around? Wilde argues that naturalism and realism are destroying good art, and that true art is that which does not tell the truth at all, but lies, and lies for itself, not for education, personal gain, or moral persuasion. Wilde makes the case for the virtues of aestheticism over realism. In other words, art depicting the world as it could be, as opposed to depicting the world as it is. It's important to note that Wilde is not trying to solely craft a particular aesthetic or style. He is rather making a metaphysical argument about what art is, and an aesthetic or ethical argument about what art should be. He's not simply saying this is one style or way to create art. He is saying this is the right way to create art, and other ways are wrong, not beautiful, not good art. Wilde starts the dialogue off with a conversation between Vivian and Cyril about going outside, lying on the grass, and enjoying nature. Vivian objects, arguing that nature is uncomfortable and not all it's cracked up to be. This launches into a discussion of Vivian's new article, which argues that art should not attempt to imitate life or nature, but rather should lie for its own sake to make stories more interesting, more engaging, less boring, and overall more beautiful. Wilde goes on to list and critique a number of realist writers who are poor liars and who focus on accuracy over artistry in a number of very clever quips that we won't reproduce here. Uh, a central theme of the piece is the question of whether art imitates life or life imitates art. For the realist, art should imitate life. Its goal is to be an accurate, if unimaginative, copy of that which is seen in life. Wilde disagrees with this view, arguing instead that life in fact imitates art. People try to emulate the things they see in literature, in theater, and so on. The stories that are told on stage and on the page are how we model our lives, how people develop their goals. They develop those goals by imagining and reading and receiving art, and it's through that art that they decide what they want to do, and so their lives are mimicked after those things that they see in art, in culture, and so on. For Wilde, art, by lying, leads the way, and life simply follows behind. Lies tell a story, and people with their lives strive to follow that story, often imperfectly. Art provides that perfection that life never truly can. Wilde goes so far as to argue that even nature itself follows behind art. This argument can be understood in a number of ways, but one way is that people, through words, stories, and art, define nature, give nature meaning, delineate between different components of nature, make a gray sky sad, a volcano angry, or a sunny beach happy. Humans provide the context to decide that one organism is one organism and another organism is another organism, that a landscape stops in one place and starts in another through the stories that we tell, that a certain type of landscape has a certain type of meaning, that certain animals have perhaps personified characteristics. Nature for Wilde is boring, reproducing the same thing over and over again, the same weather, the same landscapes, the same behaviors. While art, true art, great lies, do not just try to reproduce nature, they are imaginative, constantly creating new original things and providing new emotional true meaning for that nature that is out there, as opposed to it simply being a blank, uninterpreted, unimaginative canvas 
art is taking that nature and turning it into something that is connected to people, that is beautiful, that is interesting, engaging, and not repetitive and boring. While Wilde wrote long before postmodernism, there is a strain of postmodernist reaction to this modernist obsession that Wilde is frustrated with, with accuracy and truth in his work. You can see Wilde almost as challenging, challenging the implicit valorization of truth over lies in modernism and realist art. You can find in poststructuralism and postmodernism this idea of these implicit dichotomies that we are implicitly valorizing one half and devaluing the other half. In this way, we're implicitly valuing truth over lies, even though perhaps there's no reason we should. And as Wilde argues, maybe there's a reason we should be valuing lies, particularly in art, over truth. That there may be other spheres where truth is valuable, but when it comes to art, lies are the most valuable. Wilde argues that art should not valorize truth, but lies instead. Truth makes for nothing but boring art, while lies allow us to imagine a world that is better or different and more beautiful than the one we live in. For more on this, check out our video on the postmodern theory of language. Now, Wilde's view can be summed up in four principles of aestheticism. Art has its own independent life. Bad art comes from attempting to duplicate life and nature. Life imitates art more than the inverse. And the goal of art should be to tell beautiful lies, not attempt to reproduce things factually or tell lies for some other purpose, such as a uh, social, uh, moral, or political goal. In this series, we will examine Wilde's aestheticism, which argues for art for art's sake, and opposing views to it, such as realism, which says art should focus on realistically portraying life and nature, and functionalism, which argues that should, art should lie, but it should do so to serve some purpose. It shouldn't lie for lying's sake, for creating solely something beautiful, but for having some moral or some goal. While Wilde does not directly confront functionalism in the same way that he's confronting realism in this essay, it is in the background, and he pokes at it in different ways when he's talking about politicians and when he's talking about moral education and so on. So it's definitely something that he's standing in opposition to. So these three points can be seen in some way as three opposing views on what is the goal of art. So with that, the next video we're going to check out is what is artistic realism, the kind of foundational viewpoint that Wilde is arguing against in The Decay of Lying. Then we'll take a look at Wilde's viewpoint, what is aestheticism, the view of art for art's sake or art for itself. And finally, we'll take a look at what is aesthetic functionalism, the idea that art should be used as a tool for whether that's social change or simply to have a goal beyond uh, artistic interpretation. Once we have covered these three basic positions, we're going to dig deeper into some of Wilde's arguments, and we'll try to apply some distinctions to some contemporary debates, including the question of evil races and fantasy, cultural myths and critical race theory, Afrofuturism, and much more. So stay tuned. We're still formulating exactly what kind of that second half of the series is going to look like, so stay tuned for that for now. Follow along, and we will be having new videos on these specific topics uh, that relate to Oscar Wilde's Decay of Lying coming up soon. Also, thank you to everyone. We are officially back from hiatus, and we'll be putting out videos every week moving forward for a while. So thank you to everyone that stuck with the channel while we were off for a while. Welcome back. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.